Hey, it's Dave Palmer. How you guys doing? We're going to talk about Urban Geography 2020 on the AP exam this year. And um, the, the FRQs are just going to cover units one through five this year on that test that's going to be 45 minutes long. But Urban Geography has a lot of crossover content that covers multiple units. Now, this one, this video is going to deal with units one through four. And urban is this big synthesis unit that brings things together. And so we want to make sure that we're connecting pieces together. Now, ag has so many connections with urban that it gets its very own video. But you know what? What every good geographic journey needs is a good pair of shoes. So let's get going on a great big geography walk. So let's get this journey going. Hey. There's a bunch of key vocab from the urban unit. And while there's no urban focused FRQ this year, you better be ready because there are some big concepts that you need to know. Um, they're going to make your FRQs better because we want our FRQs to rock. And I've listed a bunch of things here. And what I'm going to do is on each slide, I'm going to talk about elements of each of the first four units and possible connections that could exist on the AP test. And the more urban you know, especially in the areas that I'm going to focus on, the better off you're going to be and the more you're going to perform on the test. So if you don't remember this list, come back and look at it in a few minutes. Hey, and you know what? It would be nice to know the location of a few big cities, and I'll show you why here in a moment. So unit one is all about thinking geographically or thinking spatially. And I've listed here on the left, you can see 1.1, 1.2. And there's some big ideas here about reading a map. And cities are big clues on looking at map and trying to figure out where in the world you're looking at. Um, and they can point you in the right direction and illustrate that. And then you see this word scale, geographic data, scale, power of data, scale, scales of analysis, regional analysis, scale. Um, hey, when a word's repeated that many times, scale's a big deal. And so when we talk about scale, are we looking at the local scale, the regional scale? Local scale could be city scale. Regional scale might be a metropolitan area, country scale, global scale, national scale. So understanding scale at, at different levels of issues is a big deal. Now, relative location, 1.4. This is similar to situation, and site and situation was on the list, and site is what is the stuff that's available at a certain location, and situation is proximity to what? Proximity to a port, proximity to natural resources, proximity to soil and farmland. So situation does matter, and so make sure you don't ignore situation in your study and site as well. So let's look at this. So here we go. We've got an urban systems map, and we need to be able to look at it. And as we look at the map, we can see some things. That it would be nice to know what city this is, Minneapolis, and that this is New York, and, and Denver's over here, and LA's down here. This will help your responses. So this is a geography class, and if you write an entire essay and haven't mentioned anything specifically about a geographic location, hmm. I wonder if you're going to be in the top pile. So you want to think about that and making sure that you know some of these locations and know some of the big city locations of the world and of the United States. Here's another one. You're going to be asked on the test most likely to look at some charts or graphs or data. And in this graph, you can see it's a graph of total fertility right here. And then we have some dates on this side. And then we have these words, rural counties, smaller, medium metro counties, large metro counties. Well, this is a population graph, but if you don't know what the word rural and urban and metro means, this graph might be a little bit difficult for you to understand. So make sure you understand the concept of metro, metro area, even though those sound like, and they are urban concepts, this question and this data is focused on a population pattern. So keep, keep in mind with that. Now, I just mentioned population to you, and there's a variety of connections within the population unit that we need to be aware of. So 2.3 here is population composition of pyramids. And two big concepts come to mind here. It says, it mentions in here scale and markets. Well, what are cities? Markets, one of their biggest things is goods and services are provided there. So we need to understand how to read population pyramids. So we have a couple population pyramids over here. We have Tampa, Florida. Now you should know that Tampa, Florida is a city. And this is the composition of the um, population pyramid of Tampa. And then here's Utah. Now the scale of this is by state. 
and they look different, but whatever answer you provide, make sure you're answering at the proper scale of analysis. City scale, state scale. 2.10 here, push and pull factor. So this is migration. You know, we know that cities are centers of goods and services, and, and that's one of the big reasons that people come or leave cities is because lack of jobs, potential of jobs. And, and if you know a little bit about what goes on in each of these cities or a few cities, it'll help your responses to, to shine and to, and to look better. Just because the FRQs aren't focused on um, urban itself, it, we will design rubrics that include answers that could potentially be answered from the urban unit. So we'll include those type of answers. The other thing is a model called the gravity model. So make sure you spend a little bit of time look at the gravity model. Gravity model has two applications. One as a migration pull factor where people are drawn to it because of the size of a city. And a little bit in retail, which is more the economic unit, but there is that retail aspect to bigger the stores, more people come in those areas. But spend a little bit of time reviewing the gravity model um, and making sure you understand it. They'll enrich your responses and, and give you some more ideas of how to answer FRQs if you're faced with a migration question. 2.11, rural to urban migration. Huge trend in global migration patterns. And so we need to be aware of that. And we also need to be aware of the impact of migration on settlements and cities and towns. So as people pour in from the rural areas that they're coming to the cities. Now, these would be the squatter settlements. And now that would be normally studied in the urban unit, but it doesn't mean that you can't add that information if there's a question about impacts of rural to urban migration and discuss urban patterns. That would be totally acceptable. So I would encourage you to read some information about what happens with the rapid migration of people from rural areas, especially in less developed countries, into these cities um, and, and the, the tension that it puts upon that city. Here's another example of rural to urban migration. We have a couple maps here. The bottom left is a uh, cartogram that just kind of shows where rural urban migration is occurring. And if you could mention a few of the cities that happen to be inside of those areas that have huge rural to urban migration, hey, that makes your response look better and stronger. The, t the one map on the right, the urban shift, this is India. Now you could probably figure out that we have Delhi and South Delhi and Northeast Delhi, but if you know if Delhi is a city, that's going to help you in your response in Mumbai. So while the focus of the question is not on cities, you, knowing some names of some cities and a little bit about this will be very beneficial to you as you respond to these FRQs. Unit number three, culture. So cultural landscape is a big pattern and something that um, we're going to spend a lot of time with and I think is going to be potentially on the exam. But ethnic neighborhoods, we talked about an ethnicity. Wait, ethnic neighborhoods, that sounds a lot like urban to me. Redlining and the tension that can exist because of that and the racial segregation. So we need to be aware of those concepts. While yes, you might study that in urban, you could have studied an ethnic in ethnicity and, and culture. So make sure that you're familiar with that. 3.6, cultural ideas and practices um, can change from small scale to large scale processes such as what? Urbanization and globalization. This is that pop versus folk culture tension that cities are these um, where culture change rapidly and, and be aware of the impacts that urbanization and close proximity to people living together has on culture and the interactions that occur, either mixing cultures, blending cultures, uh, culturation, all kinds of different concepts have a play here. And if you understand the urbanization process, your answers will be better. Now, this is where the concept of world city or global city comes into play. Now, it's definitely in the urban unit, World cities are these big cities that have huge influence on the culture, power, media, economics, and politics of the world. And so if we understand the places like New York City and London and Tokyo and Shanghai have huge influence on a global pop cultural phenomena, then that will make our answers better. And that's ultimately one of our goals. Is, and we should be able to talk about those in our responses if it's appropriate. And then finally, 3.4. Types of diffusion. You've already learned about hierarchical diffusion. Well, hierarchical diffusion is basically going from big cities to medium cities to small cities. And so that's a little bit about cities. And so understanding a few examples of that process will, will make your answers respond, be better, 
and, and improve that. So make sure you understand hierarchical diffusion and the role that urban systems play in that. It's not hard, but make sure that you understand the connection with urban geography and not ignore that. And then the last unit, political geography. Political geography has lots of connections. Um, 4.10, um, centripetal and centrifugal forces. Once again, that urban versus rural tension that exists. Um, the centrifugal forces of the urban areas, the demands of the urban areas and the power that they want versus the rural areas and the farming. This is a centripetal or centrifugal force that can exist. Regionalism. Now, most regionalisms are centered around some sort of city. And we'll talk about Spain a little bit here with Barcelona and Madrid and the tension that exists between those two. But cities are usually at the core of this. Not, and so be aware of that. 4.7, forms of governance, um, political power. Well, most capitals are cities last time I checked, so we need to be a little bit aware of that. And um, capitals can exist at the country scale or the state scale, you know, um, subnational or province scale. And so be aware of that interaction and the power and the role that that plays. Also with unitary versus federal. Um, one of the big connections here is this concept of primate city versus rank size model. So I want to make sure that you spend a little bit of time looking at that. And I, I've got a slide here on primate city in a moment that I'll talk about to explain it. But first, what we have here is we've got, this is from last year's question. And over here on the left, we have a map of Spain. And we have Madrid. And this was a question on political geography about devolution. And I, this tells me that it's the capital. But if I also know that Catalonia, a big city there, is Barcelona, this helps me to improve my answer as I discuss the concept of devolution and the potential split between these two regions. Here in Nigeria, Abuja was a relocated capital from Lagos down here on the coast up to here. And the reasons for why that was moved is important. It's a political cultural concept but it's a relocated capital and and understanding that would help and this is a political geography question with a little bit of urban geography that makes your answers better and students that did this last year their responses were strong they were great if they started talking about those things so i mentioned this concept of primate city well there's an association between primate cities and unitary states now it's not a for sure thing but when you think of France and I say, hey, what's the largest city in France? Most people can think of that and they say Paris. Well, what a primate city is, it's one city that's way larger, much more dominant and more than twice the size of the next largest city. And it's dominant both in power and influence and population. Well, if a city in a country develops that way, it's also most likely a unitary state, which France is, where you have power concentrated in the capital. It's a primate city. So unitary state, is a total fair political geography question. And if you discuss the role of a primate city in that, that would enhance your answer. The other way is the federal system. So in the United States, we have a distribution of power and influence for the federal system where we share power. Now the rank size rule, I want you to make sure you read a little bit about the rank size rule, but our cities are more designed that the largest city is New York City, approximately 20 million. And then there's rough two cities about half the size, Chicago over here, here's Chicago, and here's Los Angeles, about half the size of New York City. Now, because of our federal system, we have a, equal, a more even distribution of power and city size to our system. So understanding rank size rule will develop a deeper understanding of the federal system and the shared powers and how it looks spatially on our maps so spend some time looking at rank size rule and making sure you look at it so the goal is to make our frqs rock that's what we want to do we want our frqs and our answers to stand out there will be no frq focused on urban but knowledge of urban geography can make our answers more complete and have them stand out so keep that in mind as you're studying this and looking at those vocabulary terms that I've mentioned previously. So look for my video on agriculture and urban. It'll be coming out soon. And welcome to Team Awesome. Take care and have a great night. Hey, started a new YouTube channel to take care of this remote learning and to reach out to lots of people around the country. So if you find this video interesting, please feel free to use it.